uh, Director at Partners in Performance here in Africa. Um, and the presentation that I'm going to share with you this morning um, was on the back of a, um, a question, which is what, do, what is mining going to look like in 30 years time? And so, you know, we got our best and brightest people together and we sat and we thought, you know, what exactly is mining going to look like? Um, and well, we came up with the answer that, well, very simply, we don't know. Um, and, but we do know that technology um, creation, technology adoption is going to play a key component in business success. Um, value creation is going to come from uh, changes in, uh, in market demand driven by introduction of new technologies. Um, it's going to come from uh, operating models being reinvented, um, changing the way organizations deploy their, uh, their resources. Um, and it's going to come from, of course, you know, introduction of new technologies that will drive costs down and increase production um, and, and really ultimately change the way business decisions are made. Now, as I'm sure you are all aware, there is no shortage of new technologies in the market. Um, I mean, I, I always refer to it as the, as the sweetie shop out there. Um, there, is, there is amazing stuff that's, that's coming onto the market. Um, and all of it standalone has a, has a fantastic value proposition. Um, the question which a lot of businesses and, and mining operations are struggling with, which is, you know, what is the right technology for, for our business? Um, and that is not necessarily an easy task. And understanding what the right technologies are now, what the right technologies are in, uh, into the future, in the, in, in the next horizon and the, in the five-year horizon, um, making those decisions and making those choices, quite frankly, is, is difficult. And, um, and, and I think as more technologies come out, there's going to become even more difficult. Um, so creating your digital roadmap, as it's been referred to a uh, number of times, um, is one of the things that we spend quite a bit of our time doing, um, thinking about how do you really make sure that the technology selections you're making are the right ones. And so I'm, I, I'm glad that uh, I think it was Ruan who asked the question around value. And that's sort of our fundamental premise, which is, you know, your business is going to change over the years. Um, and it, you need to constantly be understanding what is driving value in your operation. And then you need to be saying, okay, once I know what drives value, then I can go out and actually start looking at number one, what technologies are available. And then number two, what technologies are suitable for me and my operation. Now, in order to do that, you need to have a very clear understanding of where your operational constraints are and understand. So in this example, mining is the constraint. And then within mining, understand where the constraint is. Because, I mean, as we all know, if we're not working and applying the, um, the new technologies or working on the bottleneck of our operation, then we're not going to see the bottom end results that are required to deliver the business case promised by the, the, the new technology. Um, because simply it won't move the needle. So in this particular case, loading happens to be the bottleneck and understanding, you need to understand, okay, within loading, what are the key levers um, that uh, are driving my productivity? In this case, it happens to be loader productivity or swing to load. And the root cause of that, again, really understanding, having an in-depth understanding of your operations might be something like operator skill. So now that you know what you're dealing with, that the single most important thing that you need to be addressing in your organization is operator skill, because that's going to move the needle on the most important or the bottleneck process that is going to move the needle uh, for, your, for, for the bottom line. So next step would be understanding, okay, what sort of technologies are available to address operator skill? Um, and there are lots. So, you know, I mean, real-time monitoring, uh, short interval controls, digital twins, 
um, lots of technologies available. So then it's a matter of understanding which one is going to provide you the highest value given, in, given your circumstances. And then you can also consider which of them is the easiest to, to implement. So implicit in this is you need to understand what's out there. And, and certainly as partners in performance, we are, we're, we're pretty technology agnostic. Um, we, we maintain a database of all technology related to the mining industry out there. And uh, it, we help our clients select what is the most appropriate technology for their, uh, their, their challenge or their problem, as uh, MP was saying. Um, so one such technology is virtual technology, of course. Um, and virtual technology training is an example of a technology which has come on leaps and bounds over the last couple of years. Um, you know, it's, they're using it as a, it's a safe, way of doing training. It's cost effective. You don't have to take a uh, training kit down. And it's been proven to improve um, uh, memory retention by, I think it's about four and a half to five times percent. And you're going to get productivity improvements in the region of 15 to 25 percent um, if used effectively. And I think in there lies the, the, one of the key points, which is if used effectively, because it has to be used effectively. Um, but at the end of the day, what you're focusing on is you're addressing the key root cause of one of the key levers within the most important, your constrained area of operation to ultimately unleash value in the operation by choosing the right technology. So that is a, an important part of it is choosing the right technology. And, and, and I, I might add that the right technology for um, the your competitor down the road does not mean it's the right technology for you. Um, it really is having an intimate understanding of your business, your value drivers to choose the right technologies. Um, but having the technology, and this speaks to some of the questions that were asked, um, uh, and for example, Ellie's question is, is only part of it because you also need to make sure that that technology is hardwired into the operations into the business. You need to have alignment and ownership for that technology throughout the business. And you need to have the capabilities to use that technology. So really, you know, the, the, the best technology that's out there is technology that is used and used effectively. And that is where a lot of the challenge lies. So when it comes to wiring in the technologies, and when we refer to wiring, this is really about understanding relative to that technology, how are you going to, what are the KPIs associated with the technology? So for what, how are you going to measure the success of virtual reality? And this speaks to um, the business case that MP was referring to, because you need to know what, what is going to actually deliver the business case for that technology. What are the procedures you need in place to make sure that the technology is used? Um, what are, how do you make sure that the right people are, um, MP used the word responsible, I'm going to use the word accountable to make sure that this technology is rolled out effectively and is used. And what sort of reviews do you need in place to make sure that that is the case? Um, so how do you make sure that the technology is not just something that sits on the side and rolled out by the IT department, but is an actual fact embedded into the day-to-day -day operations? And then you need to make sure that that's all good and well, but you need to make sure that the people who are using it can use it effectively. And this needs to go beyond your classroom training. It needs to be, it really needs to be understanding how, uh, how it is going to be become ingrained in the, in, in, in the organization tool set and passed down through example experience and, um, and sharing of, uh, of, of learning. Um, so really, when I, I sort of come back to the beginning, which is, it is for technology adoption to be successful, it requires an holistic approach that starts with value. Where's the value? Um, choose the right technology to go after that value, and then make sure that it's hardwired into the business. Make sure you have the right capabilities to make sure that uh, it is effectively used and that there is alignment and ownership across the operation. And so I'm gonna gonna pause there, and it's uh, uh, open the, the floor to to questions. Thanks, Mark. Uh, any questions? 
I see we still empty at the moment. It seems like Mark, you gave an excellent, very clear, clear proposed uh, presentation. Um, well, uh, and I and I think it ties into what uh, MP and uh, the former speaker was saying, which is it, you know there's it, it is all about going after the value, but making sure you're choosing the right value. Yes, no, comment. It is a great presentation, so I agree with that. Thanks, Ron. Uh, let's just give it a moment. Maybe the guys are still thinking, typing questions. So we'll just give a moment. Mark, and then perhaps just a question from my side. Uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, do you see mining companies, specifically Southern African mining companies, going for it? Y using virtual reality? Yes. Um, they are already. Um, and, and very successfully. So, so the short answer is yes. Um, there there are, are various operations that are using virtual reality, um, you know, whether it's on loading or uh, even, even rock drills. They've got amazing uh, VR technology, which they use for rock drills, um, which simulates you holding the, and actually the, the feel and the weight and feel of a rock drill to basically improve the um, your your speed of drilling, your penetration, and your accuracy. Um, so, I mean, the answer is yes. Beautiful. I see no further questions coming in. So, Mark, thanks a lot. We slightly ahead of, of schedule, but if you have uh, further questions, uh, members, then you can just pose them. We'll get those questions to Mark, and then he can provide you some answers. Thanks, Mark. Um, by all means. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity.